Welcome in and everybody to the next episode of Sideline Chatter. Uh, co-host Justin Hagee, Jay Hags here with James Albert. How are we doing tonight? Doing all right. Uh, one day closer to the NFL season. I am officially done all my drafts. I'm drafted out 10 leagues. Can't do it no Is more. Is it 10? Yeah, 10 even. Can't do it no more. Eight on Yahoo, one on Sleeper, one on ESPN. How you doing? How you, how you feeling? Yeah, we, uh, we had a little hiatus. A two week yeah. hiatus. Yeah, <coughs> the boy got the vid. A little vidy on it, you know. But we're <laughs> boy back. got the vid. <laughs> super super spreader. <laughs> we're feeling better now. We're back to uh, drop some knowledge. Like you said, the uh, league starts. I mean, NFL season starts in three days, right? Yeah, Thursday night, Cowboys Bucks. So while uh, the topic of this episode, what we're gonna do is our preseason predictions for fantasy football awards. So uh, we have. Pretty much six awards, and we have an, another thing after that. So we have our MVP, comeback player, best value pick, the biggest bust, rookie of the year, deep sleeper, so someone who has ADP over 150, and then after that we have our top two most owned players on the teams we've drafted. You said you're in 10. I'm in eight, and I've drafted seven. I still have a draft for Wednesday. So. You're a trooper, bro. <laughs> I'm done. I guess I was telling Justin I had two drafts last night. At the same time, one on ESPN and one on Yahoo, and by like the tenth round of the ESPN one, I just was couldn't draft anymore. <laughs> about the auto draft, I just couldn't do it. But uh, I'm just excited to uh, see the uh, work I put in pay off this season. So we'll see. We'll see what Eru. happens, man. Uh, yeah, we got a Discord up to like 115 members. So uh, if you aren't aren't in that, go join that. Hit 4K on TikTok. Yeah, 4K. During uh, our break. I know a lot of the other accounts have like, you get out to like 13K, 10K, which I'm trying to get. But uh, go follow that. Link that in the bottom below in the link tree. But enough of all that shit. Let's get started <laughs> here. <laughs> you know we had to get one in there. Get a little curse bomb in there. But, all right, so Fantasy MVP. I'll start it off. Uh, we, could, we could probably just say McCaffrey, both of us, but yeah, we're we're not being dry like that. We're here to offer some more knowledge. So, my MVP is a player I actually have drafted in zero leagues, and it's going to be Austin Eckler because mm. I think he has the potential to finish high as like a Camaro type. Uh, I won't say McCaffrey, but I think he could be like a top three finished uh, running back based off the fact that their offensive line is going to be like majorly improved this year from last year. Uh, they signed uh, Corey Lindsley, they drafted Rashawn Slater, uh, they brought in. Joe Lombardi, from who was on the Saints, who obviously gave Kamara all that work and turned him to a monster, obviously. Uh, I think his goal line touches should improve. I mean, they can only go up because fucking mm-hmm. Anthony Lynn last year was... We, we know how this is an <laughs> <a laughs> anti-Anthony Lynn podcast, but... <laughs> Every time I turn the Chargers game on, I goal line and fucking Josh Kelly's in. It's like, come on, So dude. you're not worried about... Kelly and who's the other one? Roundtree and Ju- Justin Jackson. Yeah, f- four running backs is really I mean, annoying. I am a little worried about that, but like, I feel like it can only go up from last year. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And obviously, he has a top three pass catching upside in the league behind McCaffrey and Kamara. Uh, he has a clear shot at 85 catches, and I just think the Chargers' offense this year can be a top three offense. To be honest, like it might be a long shot, but I definitely think they have the players, the roster to do so. Obviously, they have a new coach, but. Austin Eckler, I think if you take him high as pick full PPR, pick uh, five, I think it's valid. You know what I mean? I had him ranked over Zeke. Right. right, right, right. So you can even still take him to pick four if you're really that high on him. Yeah. Uh, I kind of regret taking Aaron Jones. No, I don't regret, but, like, I probably should have took Aaron Jones in one league and Eckler in one another. But instead, I took Jones in both. Uh, I do like him a lot. And that'll segue right into yours, I guess. Yeah, that's a perfect segue <laughs> right into my MVP, who's going to be Aaron Jones, who, just like Justin said, his MVP doesn't have in any leagues. I guess I, without thinking about it, backed up this claim. I have Aaron Jones in four out of ten leagues, which is, like, I usually try don't like not to do that. But, I don't know, I just think he's going to be insane this year. Last year, he's fourth in fantasy points per game for running backs. And he still lost work to Jamal Williams. Yeah, he's, Jamal Williams is gone. I'm not that worried about AJ Dillon. I just for some reason like I know they drafted him high, but they don't really use him, and there's really no reason to. So like I'm not really worried about it. Rodgers is gonna. I feel like Rodgers is gonna go on a revenge tour this year. That offense is just gonna be insane. 
So, yeah, I'm just all in on Aaron Jones this year. I agree. Like, I have him in two leagues out of my six. Uh, I feel like Williams was used as a third down back more than Dylan is going to be used as a third mm-hmm. down back because Dylan's more of like an in-between-the-tackles kind of guy. I think Dylan might take more carries slash red zone touches away than Williams did, but – I think the receiving work that Jones will get will kind of like offset that. See, last year, even with Jamal Williams, there he still had forty four catches last yeah. year. Mm-hmm. So like, I think he easily can get over sixty this year, which for a running back is kind of really good. He's a cheat code, yeah. I'll say for a running back who gets twenty carries a game to get over sixty catches is kind of insane. Like Eckler gets like ninety, but he doesn't run the ball like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm just really all in on Aaron Jones, and he's safe too. Like you know what he's going to do. Yep, and he's been healthy his whole career pretty much. So. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I picked Eckler as my MVP, and I don't even fucking have him in any, <laughs> <laughs> in any leagues. <laughs> but uh, on to the next one, we got uh, comeback player over the years. Not many two players that would actually qualify for this. But it's comeback slash bounce back. Uh, I'm going Dak Prescott. Hmm. Obviously, before the injury last year, he was literally insane. He's on pace for like 6,500 yards, which is obviously not sustainable for this year. And I don't expect him to do that. But uh, just like I said with the Chargers, I think the Cowboys have a potential to be a really high-flying offense, like a top three as well. Like, if they had a better offense than the Chiefs, like, I wouldn't even be surprised, to be honest. Uh, The reason I don't think he'll have those crazy numbers is, like, their defense can't be as bad as it was last year. Yeah. I mean, they were just terrible, like, letting up 40 a game. So he's throwing, like, 50 times a game last year. But uh, I grabbed him in Jake's league in a 2QB league in round five, which I thought was a pretty steal, in my opinion. Yeah. Especially for two QB. Mm-hmm. He's another one where I'm like, how I mentioned with Jones and Eckler, I can kind of split him or I would like to split him and like Lamar. Like one league, I might go Lamar. One league, I might go Dak. Like it's kind of just that close for me. I think he's a QB four slash five. Like I wouldn't put him in the top three, but uh, he's kind of going undervalued in my opinion because like if you can get him around five, six, probably not seven, but like, and then if you're drafting Mahomes around three, like I think Dak's obviously a better value around like six or five or what the case may be, but. Dak Prescott, if he's your QB, expect big things. All right, now I'll go with my comeback player who I kind of struggle with this because, like Justin said, there's not too many like that you could pick for this besides like the obvious. Like, I think Dak might be a little obvious, but yeah. but it's still very valid. McCaffrey missed 13 games last year. You could say him, but obviously he's <laughs> the number one player in fantasy, so like you can't say that. So I'll go with probably one of my favorite players. I get clowned for uh, being a stand of this player <laughs> but um i'm going with debo samuel i just I only played seven games last year that's why i think he qualifies for this list I only played less than half the season but the way that offense works like how much motion they use and the most like all the creative ways that they try to move the ball especially with trey lance whenever he takes over i just feel like if debo can stay on the field big if because he's not really proven to be that healthy in his two years in the league. He's only played 22 games total in two years, which, like, you don't really like to see that. But I mean, if he if he is healthy, he's probably going to catch 80, 90 passes. And obviously, they're not going to be deep, but his, he has, like, the ability to take any any ball to the house. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I'm just a big Debo fan. I think I have him in a few leagues. And if you can get him in the, like, seventh, eighth round as your third receiver or, like, or your flex if you don't have three receivers. And I feel like he's a – really sturdy flex if that's where you get him right yeah i like him as well i think uh like their team as a whole do a good job of, like putting the ball in like their playmakers hands type of thing like you don't really saw, see a lot of randoms like scoring touchdowns in their team like mm-hmm. offensive linemen and random four string <laughs> receivers you know what i mean yeah <clears throat> i drafted him last night as my wide receiver three i prefer him to be a flex more than a wide receiver three but what the fuck are you gonna do <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll go next. I'll take the next one. So next we're going to do rookie, right? Yeah, rookie that's next. fine. So another player who I've been high on since the NFL draft, I think a lot of people have, obviously. I'm going with Kyle Pitts, tight end. Probably going as your tight end four, four or five, maybe even six, depending on the people like Hawkinson and Andrews more than him. Mm-hmm. But I just think the path to – over 100 targets is just insanely, like, easy for him. And for a tight end, especially a rookie tight end, that's, like, unheard of. Yeah. And, the, like, we all know the stuff that we say, like, in the draft, like, freak athlete, like, he's a receiver playing tight end, highest drafted tight end of all time. 
Like you just and that like Matt Ryan, we had seven before we were talking before, he averaged thirty nine pass attempts a game. Insane. Like and Julio Jones is gone. I know he didn't really stay on the field that much, but he definitely would would have taken a lot away from Pitts if he were still there. Ridley's gonna be the guy. Obviously Gage is still there, but when the quarterbacks turn on the ball six hundred and thirty times. I don't think the they're going to run the ball a lot either. Yeah, and their defense, that's the next thing I was going to say. Their defense is probably on pace this year to be one of the worst defenses in NFL history. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, they're going to be playing in either a shootout or playing from behind every right. single game. So, yeah, Kyle Pitts, draft him. It's fun. Yeah, I don't have I don't, yeah, I don't, have him in any league. I he always just seems. Too. Got him in a dynasty league, too. So, it's, it's fun. fun. He always seems, somebody always, like, re- not reaches, but, like, just fucking. Lebo. Fucking had Kittle and then took Pitts. Oh, yeah. Don't put that douchebag out there that already has a tight end. And then, like, so you think you're all good because the guy in front of you has a tight end already drafted and then he takes another one. Really like, affected on. my whole draft strategy. <laughs> At least trade him if you're going to keep, like, draft both. Don't be a scumbag. <clears throat> all right, so my rookie of the year, I want to mention, like, we probably both would say Najee Harris. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I should say he's that. a borderline first-round pick, like, early second. So uh, I think he's obviously the clear cut, but – Enough with that. My rookie of the year is Devontae Smith of the Eagles. He's going as a wide receiver 35 right now, which is, I feel like, kind of low. Yeah. Well, I don't know. He hasn't played, so I understand why that low. But, like, I just like the upside there. Like, if he's your wide receiver three or flex, like, I wouldn't mind. Because that means you probably got him around, like, seven, eight-ish range, maybe even nine. Like, I like him over guys like Odell, Bel- Odell Beckham, uh, some other, like like I don't know. I just feel like he has high upside, obviously because they don't have a lot of options there besides Jalen Rager. Obviously, Hirsch is not going to air it out and like probably throw for might not even get four thousand passing yards. But uh, just like you mentioned with Pitts, they spent a first round pick on him. They obviously need a receiver depth, uh, and he, he was a monster in college. Obviously, one of the best receivers in college history if you look at his statistics. So uh, I have him in. I think just Jake's league, who I took as my wide receiver three. I don't one have him in any. Yeah. I tried. Everybody takes him. He's another one. Yeah, we're from Jersey, so. All the homers fucking take, yeah. him, take him early as shit. this third round. But, nah, uh, I think Devontae Smith, wide receiver 35, like I mentioned, I think he's pretty undervalued right now. And that's going to segue up in, into my next award. Is going to be the biggest bust? Uh, this player is a wide receiver 27 right now. This is all Fantasy Pros ADP. Uh, I have another rookie receiver, Jamar Chase. Uh, I just feel like he's – I don't know how the targets going to divide up. I don't know how pass-heavy this team's going to be. Obviously, they passed a ton last year. But I think with uh, you know, with Mixon coming back healthy, I think they're going to try to establish the run, try to keep Barrow healthy and whatnot. And obviously, I think T. T Higgins kind of established himself as the number one in this offense. And then obviously, I have Tyler Boyd in the slot who's going to eat up a lot of targets. Uh, just Chase going as a wide receiver 27, just, it's not doing it for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's obviously had the rough preseason, or just a rough game, you can say. But, uh, like, guys I'm taking in his range, uh, Jerry Judy, I'm taking over him. Uh, Devontae Smith? Yeah, I probably would. Maybe Devontae Smith over him. Uh, he's in, like, the Galladay range, Michael Thomas range. Uh, Robbie Anderson range, I would have Robbie over him. Uh I took Chase last night in one league because I just – obviously he was a night – he's probably one of the – or the best prospect coming out of college, like in the draft, a lot of people think. So I want to take that chance on him. But his target share and that offense, I'm just not sure how that's going to play out. So, I mean, he had a really bad preseason too. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really – I mean, it doesn't really mean that much, but you never <laughs> like to see a team take a top 10 pick on a wide receiver and then drop all of his targets. <laughs> like he's – yeah. His like there was like all the knock like the knocks against him like I know he was insane like because he uh, he opted out right LSU like he played his, oh, his sophomore so, year yeah. and then he opted out of junior year, and then he went in the draft like he was insane his sophomore year and then he like coming out of the draft like they said just has short arms and like he doesn't really <laughs> yes. get separation well and like yeah. I think that actually like pr- got proven so yeah. like I don't know I, they should have taken Penny Sewell but that's not what we're talking about they, here. they didn't need a receiver at all. But uh, everyone say your prayers for uh, Burrow every Sunday morning. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not really high on Jamar Chase. I don't have him in any leagues because I just feel like he's way too expensive. So I, Exactly. So I'll go with my bust, who uh, if you drafted this guy, you're going to wholeheartedly disagree with me. And <laughs> if you didn't draft him, you're probably going to be in full agreement with me. 
going with Mike Davis, uh, the CMC stand-in from last year. Now with Atlanta, got two Falcons for awards. That's uh, <laughs> I just realized that that's shocking. But um, he's 28 years old, just now getting his first opportunity to be the guy, which really doesn't happen ever. I feel like that's kind of like like Devontae Freeman's 29 and he's out of the league. <laughs> so like right. for him getting his chance now on a team that's gonna suck. That's probably going to win less than five games. I just feel like season long, it's not going to be there. Like, That's a good point. They're probably going to sign someone else. I know they brought in Gallman. I would assume they would have another one because they only have two running backs right now, I yeah. think. I would assume they bring in a third. I think Gallman takes over at some point. Maybe not the whole thing, but they definitely go into a split as Gallman learns the offense, I think. Mm-hmm. And like I said, they're like you have no incentive to play your 28 year old starting running back when you're like three and 10. Mm-hmm. So like, I just feel like if you can't, if you do have Mike Davis, I would personally try to sell him early in the season when he is doing successful. Cause I think he's going to be good to start the season. Like I'm just saying it was last year for the overall, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> you getting robbed? I don't know, maybe <laughs> I, I just think season long, he's going to be a bust for everything I said. Yeah. But. Yeah, like uh, I had him last year. He started off really well. He was getting a lot of catches. I kind of feel like that was kind of the part to like Teddy Bridgewater's game. He's always mm. he's a check down god. We know that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some guys in his range. Daryl Henderson, I prefer over him. Deanian Harris, I prefer over him. Sermon, I do. Cream Hunt, I do. Uh, I'm not on the Davis bandwagon as well. Uh, I know I feel like it's some people it's hot or cold with him. Like Some like really love him a lot. I mean, they think he's the best value in the draft and stuff like that. I don't like. I don't think his upside's there, so I don't want him on my team. That's the way I draft. Uh, he's slow. He's like, I don't say fat, but like, you know <laughs> what I mean. Like, he don't hit us on top end speed. I mean, I just, he's husky. We saw those pictures. Yeah, the quads. Yeah. yeah, he's got big quads, man. But so is AJ Dillon. Man. She told me nothing. <laughs> yeah, I don't have Davis in any of my leagues. I just, he's just he's not exciting to me. You know what I mean? He might get some cheap points, some ch- cheap five six catches or something the first few weeks. Uh, but yeah. If we uh, you see somebody come in the room, shoot. I was say, uh, <laughs> this, 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 this gets cut short. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> Saying whoever is you're watching this on YouTube, if you see my facial reaction every ten seconds, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure if my house is getting robbed or if my family's home. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening, but but all right. So I wrapped up the biggest bust. Now we're gonna go with the best value pick of the draft. Uh, I just mentioned this player. He's going as the RB thirty. Uh, it's gonna be Trey Sermon, the rookie running back for the Niners. Uh. I just think, all right, so number one, Mostert, obviously he's missed time in his career. He's never really been healthy. I like Mostert a lot as a player. Uh, Kyle Shanahan and the Niners, they know how to run the ball. Okay, it's definitely my family. I hear my sister. Okay. Uh, I'm really high on the Niners <laughs> this year. Bullets over here. <laughs> yes, Trey Sermon. Continue. I'm sorry. That was. Yeah, that's all right. Uh. Yeah, the Niners I'm I'm kind of sold on as offense this year. I think Sermon's going to have a big down, uh big role in the third down game. I think that they're gonna, they're going to try to preserve preserve Raheem Mostert cuz like I just mentioned he kind of struggles to stay on the field. Uh going as RB30, I think that's just great value. I I know in uh Jake's league it was, he went around 10, which I think is just ridiculous in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh some guys before him like Ronald Jones, RB28, like I prefer Sermon over Jones. Sermon over Davis. Uh, and kind of like how you mentioned with Davis, like you think he might do good in the beginning, but he'll fade off. I kind of think it's going to be the opposite with Sermon. Like he'll have to not earn his role, but he'll come along as season goes. Obviously he's a rookie and whatnot, but they traded up to get him in the draft as well. So they do like him as a player. And I think I mentioned earlier, Shanahan's going to get him the ball. He's going to play third down. So I was gonna be, he's going to be a solid pass catcher. And if he's your RB3, I think it's – it's, like, valid, you know what I mean? Yeah, especially if you go stack receiving core. Right. Yeah. So, and I think second half of the year, he can be a good low-end one, in my opinion. Like most or most are could be going for the year any second. Right. Like he's, so. we, we, yeah, we like to throw around the term glass bones for people. Yeah. I mean, he most are is Mr. Glass Bones. <laughs> that man gets hurt I think I've sermoned once two a week. of my six leagues, or two of my seven leagues, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I should have taken him in more, but I kind of do like switching up my teams a little bit, so. Yeah, I can't believe he fell that far in Jake's. I didn't yeah. even know that. But yeah, like, because after that, like RB like twenty five range, it's kind of it just, just like falls off a cliff. Weird. Like, there's really no one mm-hmm. there that's like exciting, 
and like I don't really like to draft like yeah, boring players like unless like it's m- right. Like I'd rather yeah. Like AJ Dillon, like come on now. Uh, I'll go with my best value. Mine is more not like where he's ranked, but where he's being drafted. Yeah, is Kenny Galladay? Like he, I got him in the tenth round of a three flex league, and he was my third flex. Like I, that is crazy to me. Yeah. Like there's just no way he should be that low. Like I'm, and again, this like I just said, like, I don't really like to draft players who aren't exciting, and he's not that exciting because he gets hurt often. But like you can't pass up potential value like that like you know what i mean mm-hmm. so yeah I, he was a beast in 2019 when he actually played the whole season like 11 like touchdowns one, like you said, yeah, yeah he was a like, top like 10 receiver in fantasy that like if he just stays on the field and i know that's a big if but like i think 10th like round i feel like you be. take a chance at first i think he starts really slow because he hasn't played any snaps with daniel jones like at all mm-hmm. but i mean talent is still talent right you know what i mean like and he's a big deep ball threat. Like if he doesn't have to even have great rapport, if Jones just throws it up there, throws he can still up, go yeah. get it. He also had the hamstring injury though. You th- yeah, that. it's the same one that held him out the whole year last year. As uh, I said, it's it's the only if, question mark. I'm saying much. if you can get him as a bench receiver. No, oh, yeah, definitely. Like that's, <coughs> I have him as a bench that's a home run. Too, like because yeah. because all it takes is for him to be healthy, and he you're plugging him in your starting lineup immediately. Agreed. Yeah, he's been. He's been definitely falling a lot more than he should be. I, and like in the drafts, in the online drafts, you just see his name there like mm-hmm. forever, and nobody picks him. And I understand like why he falls because like you're not going to take him as your second receiver, or third receiver, right. which is where he's ranked for obvious reasons. Like I agree with that. And the fact that he's already hurt is driving it mm-hmm. down more. Like mm-hmm. that, they'll click on the player notes and you'll see he's hurt. But I said I, all that makes sense, but I'm just saying if he does fall that far, you have to <laughs> like because that's what he said while we were doing the draft. I said I would, I said that I would never draft him in my life, <laughs> and then I was sitting there looking at the options for my third flex, and I was like, "He's he's falling too far not to take him." Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I mean, even if it doesn't work out, he's a bench, a bench player, yeah. and you could just plug someone else who's the same, like ADP as him, right? Which is you still get production. So yeah. that wraps up our best value picks. So go draft them, guys, in your draft if you still. Uh, have a draft in the next three days. Our last award category is going to be deep sleeper. So uh, this is a player with an ADP over 150. ADP stands for average draft position for you noobs out there. And we're always willing to teach the noobs, you know, like Ethan. <laughs> he didn't want to learn this year, but that's all right. So uh, my deep sleeper pick is going to be <laughs> uh, Rondell Moore, the Cardinals. He's going as the wide receiver 60 off the board. Uh, so my reason for this pick is I think Kyler Murray and the Cardinals are going to kind of take that next step this year. I mean, they kind of already did last year until he got hurt with the shoulder injury. Uh, AJ Green's the, uh, number two in the death trial right now, but just like Galladay, you don't, he can go down at any, uh, second and he's pretty healthy last year, but we know his, throughout his career, he's been injury prone and he's kind of aging. Uh, Ron Delmore in the preseason looked good. Uh, I think he gets a nice boost in PPR leagues as well because he's electrifying like after the catch like he was in college. I think he like carves out like a Debo role. He could, yeah. You know what I mean? Like all like the touch passes and mm-hmm. rocket screens and stuff like that. Like negative air exactly. yards yeah, for the yeah. season type I receiver. Agree. And that's kind of like how their offense is built mm-hmm. too. Like they don't really throw shots down the field. And this is actually another player who I think is it's going to be a second half player. Uh, they obviously saw Christian Kirk at the three spot. I'm dead right right now as well, but this is his last year in his contract. I just, I just feel like he's just. Yeah, it's just, it's just how many just, how many opportunities he gets? Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Like he doesn't do it. They draft him more, so I think they're going to use him probably more in the second half of the year. And I think he can like, obviously, like I said, wide receiver sixty. So like, let me see who else is going around here. Devontae Parker, uh, <laughs> Russell Gage is solid. Kevin Myers, Elijah Moore, Cole Beasley. I'm willing to take a chance on more. So, uh, and it's round like 15, 16, 17. So, this is like the last two, three rounds of your draft if you kind of want to hit a home run. Uh, I know Hopkins is always usually healthy and always reliable, but if he were to go down, I think he could be a massive, massive steal. Like I said, they just throw the ball a lot. In PPR leagues, I think he can get you like f- five catches, 40 yards a game, maybe in the second half of the year with some upside for more if things go uh, his way. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Rondo. I think I have him in two leagues. I do as well. Like, there's so many late receivers, young receivers, mm-hmm. like, th- that all in that range. Like, 
the one I'm looking at is Rondell Miller, Gabriel Davis, Brian Edwards, Bateman, Paris Campbell, like all of them, like yeah. young receivers that if you take a stab on, like might could hit. Yeah. Like mine is a little lower than them. You know, Terrace Marshall Jr., Carolina. Um, TikTok favorite. He is a TikTok favorite. <laughs> he was just he's just a beast in college, and like I know he's the third receiver there, but we saw last year with Bridgewater, who uh, I think Darnold has a higher ceiling, like skill set mm-hmm. than Bridgewater. Yeah. So I think. It, there's potential for the offense to be even better than it was last year, and if if he could support three receivers in fantasy, then I think Darnold can too. Um, they have the easiest like schedule for wide receivers, which is, I guess it's not that important maybe, but I feel no, like yeah. I mean it's hard to predict before the season right. who's going to be a like bad pass defense, but I don't know. I just think if you're going to take a stab on somebody and those other guys are gone, I just don't think you can go wrong with Marshall. He's got a, he had a really good preseason too. Yeah, I feel like he scored. They played with the ones a lot because DJ Moore was held out for cautionary reasons, mm-hmm. and him and Donald seemed to have a pretty decent connection. I think he had a touchdown or two. I think more than one. Yeah, he definitely yeah. had two or three. Even I feel like he scored every. And week. like he had like he was having like three catches for like more than eighty yards. Yeah, multiple he had a, times. Like he had a sixty yard reception too. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah no like, I like Marshall as well. I don't. Mm, do I have him? No, I don't have him in any leagues. I think I only have him in one, mm-hmm. which people, I guess, uh, do their homework too. Cause yeah, he always gets reached on too, like, in my opinion. Not reached, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just everybody loves him kind of thing. Uh, on to the last part, uh, our top two most owned players on our teams. Like I said, I've done seven drafts. Uh, so these two guys I have on three of my teams. It's going to be Josh Allen and Chase Edmonds. Uh, Allen, I feel like it's a mix of where he's going and obviously his skill set and whatnot and his production. I mean, last year he's lit. He was literally the QB one, uh, and he's still growing as a player. Uh, they just signed Emmanuel Sanders. They do not run the ball. He just threw twenty six passes, like an under a half, in his last preseason game. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> if you're playing in a points per completion league, I think he's actually it, he gets another bump. I mean, I have him in my QB, too. Like, I'm not going to put him over Mahomes, but, like, I'd rather draft Allen in the fifth than Mahomes in the third. That's why I've done it in three of my leagues. Uh, a lot of people, I think, like, oh, just wait on QBs. I'll get Joe Burrow as QB 12, and it won't be that much different from Allen. Like, I don't I don't think that's true. Yeah, it's blasphemous. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, he was a QB 1 last year, and I feel like people just kind of aren't realizing that. Like, you're kind of just sweeping that under the rug, in my opinion. And then with uh, Chase Edmonds – I kind of just feel like I like him a lot as a player. Obviously, he's never had that bell cow role, and they signed James Conner. But I think it's going to be more of a carry split than it was last year with Drake because I feel like Conner's not as good as Drake. And Conner's, number one, he's ass. <laughs> number two, he's uh, <laughs> he's always hurt. He can really never, ever stay healthy. So, uh, And obviously, Chase Edmonds is uh, one of the best pass-catching backs in the league, and they do air the ball out a lot. And they also like to run the ball in the red zone a lot, too. Like, I think Drake had, was it 11 touchdowns last year mm-hmm. or 10? So, uh, if Edmonds misses – I'm sorry. If Connor misses time, I think Edmonds is an RB1. Uh, in PPR leagues, obviously, takes a huge uh, rank up rather than standard. He's I wouldn't really prefer him in standard, but I like Chase Edmonds this year. He's going to the RB26, which is uh, – if he's your RB2 and you want, like, really receiver heavy, maybe tight end or a QB – I'm fine with that. Yeah, I don't have him in any leagues, but I did mm-hmm. want him. It just didn't work out. He but. got picked one pick before me in two leagues, and I have him <laughs> in three leagues, so I might have had him in five. <laughs> That's insane. Um, I actually – so I was looking while we were doing this, and I actually have a three-way tie for my second most owned, so I'm going to have a couple more players. But my leading is uh, my uh, MVP for the year, Aaron Jimmy, four out of ten leagues, which – Fun. Like I, would, like, I usually don't like to stack the same players – I mean, God forbid something like the worst happens, yeah. and then I'm screwed in all four leagues. But um, I just think he has, out of those like running backs, like outside the top three, I think he has, in my opinion, the best shot to finish as RB one. I don't think you can go wrong with the other ones like Eckler and um, like Jonathan Taylor. Like I still think he and Najee Harris, Gibson, like all those guys could still, even they have outside chances to be the number yeah. one. Like. Running back's really wide open after the top three. But I just think he's going to just smash, like, seventh, eighth pick. 
like seventh running back. I just think it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I agree. So next, I have C.D. Lamb, Marquez Callaway, and Rasul Gage in three leagues each. They're all tied. Callaway and Gage are more. Well, G- mostly Callaway is really just like a to start the season, like late round. Like you can get him in like the twelfth round, right? And he's gonna be your starting receiver potentially yeah. the first like four weeks of the season. Like go- a good one too. Yeah, he looks so good preseason, especially the two catches he made for the touchdowns. Like, yeah, and like your twelfth round pick, that's not a lot of value to risk. Only yeah. risk for four weeks of the season, like. If you start, if you could start your season three and one as opposed to two and two or one and three, like why wouldn't you? Like getting that extra juice late in the draft. Gage. Every time I look it up, I'm shocked that he had a hundred targets last year mm-hmm. in that crowded ass offense. But I mean, like we said, throwing the ball almost two hundred, yeah. four hundred seventy times, whatever it was. We'll like that's insane. I don't know. I just think he's going to be. I was watching a red zone from last season today and he was mowing with right. I think he had like seven catches in like three quarters and I was like he was supposed to be the third receiver <laughs> I don't know I'm just really I high on Gage as well, yeah. really high on Gage and Lamb CD Lamb is just I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the hype train <laughs> I'm big on the hype everybody train everybody is yeah I uh, might be uh, tricked by Hard Knocks again <laughs> I don't know it usually happens to me every year I just get someone from Hard Knocks but I have him in two leagues as well he, was a, he, was, he almost finished on my list too I just I mean, that offense is going to be yeah. so good. It's just can't, can't I can't pass up on him. Exactly. No, I agree. I think Lamb's ahead of Cooper now, in my opinion. Cooper obviously has injury problems and kind of disappears from time, time and time again. But that's going to wrap up this episode. Uh, <clears throat> good luck to you guys starting your uh, your leagues this week and whatnot Thursday and Sunday. Uh, our next episode, I don't know when it's going to be. Yeah. It's not going to be long though. It's not going to be as long as it was between the last one. Uh, it might be before Sunday. It might be after Sunday, recapping or previewing it. We don't know yet, but, you know, we'll know. Finally, uh, time for some start sits, too. Yeah. We'll hit us on any platform for start sit. Get yes, you guys sir. some answers. Link tree, linked in the description. Go click on that, join the Discord, and follow the TikTok. But, all right, I'm fucking out. <laughs> <laughs>